Malta Massey, bringing you the latest happenings in dancehall and reggae music. Welcome, it's Malta Massey, and here are the stories making the cut for today. Outspoken Stephen Francis blasts JOA for not accommodating alternate athletes in Paris. He said, and I quote, I know that they're not going to have enough people for the four by 100 meters women. The founding head coach of the MVP track and field club also didn't hold back against the JAAA for their mishap which led to the exclusion of national hammer thrower record holder Nayoka Clunis from Jamaica's team. Check out this video. I mean, if I was Kemba Nelson, I wouldn't be coming back anywhere. I would stay in Spain and whatever happens, happens. But I know that they're not going to have enough people for the four by one woman. <clears throat> so you're probably not going to have a team, right? And when all that needs to happen is that the GOA find a hotel next door, put up the people, give them some food, Right, and they come in and run in exchange for somebody else as needed. But it, maybe the management of that is above my pay grade because I really can't see the problem except jealousy and stupidity. Virtually always does this. They have done it at least two other times that I can remember. One to my athlete, Nessa Carter, uh, in which they forgot to include him as a reserve in the 100 meter in China, even though he had run 98 that year. So, I mean, where I put the blame, though, is, <clears throat> I won't say the blame, but I have always preached that the coaches should not leave it up to the J3A's secretariat to, to do such a thing. I mean, you have to pretend as if you are doing your form for champs. You don't give it to the office and say, boy, fill out this. You have to make sure that you double-check. Right, and um, I've tried to impress on the coaches about that, but I guess now they understand why I'm saying that. I don't want to hear that, you know, sir. Them need to fix what them are fixed, like, like seriously. But anyways, massive. How do you feel about this news? Let me know in the comment section below. Aishana was recently on the Truth Is Real podcast where she addressed Dovey Magnum. Check this out. Get a splash now. So, we're going to get a splash. Well, I would, um, what do you mean exactly? I don't know. Like, me see the bands, I'm still going up on stage, they want them to see what other artists are going to see at the same time, and me see like, okay. I say, what, what if, me see get mad, I get a splash. When I was on the stage waiting to perform, the host was basically introducing Aishana based on the stuff that the host was saying, good, good, da, 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 yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, and the yeah. crowd are real, yeah, whatever. Style. So in my brain, I'm ready to go out. But, you know, some other little starving artists up on the stage and a big fuck up on the show, so they run out and I was like, yeah, we'll just make them go. But then they went on the stage to perform and they were throwing words. And I'm like, girl, you don't even have a bands. Like, on a band show. Rough Cut know everybody redeem. Once you're an artist, see, once you're an A-lister, you see Rough Cut, them know you're redeem. You're not after the rehearsal. Some girl is not A-list. So Rough Cut could have played a redeem for them. A bit. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I saw the man. Apparently, Dovey Magnum saw the interview and she reacted to what Aishana said by posting this on Instagram. Move, I'm going. Move, I'm going. I'll move. I'm going. I'm off. I'm going. The video had the caption on it when we see big pussy shit, Shana, a pre and a money and new hits me and the girlies a deal with then she captioned it the f youth morning to the girlies remember new music out link in my bio it not done there's a massive aishana also addressed this dj that was caught eating front check this out you know i probably that song i said i just get no more listen to play that song you know play them at tell remember them just catch one fan snapchats who that? I don't know Googling. <laughs> <laughs> the street is talking. Yeah! Too wicked. Yeah! And I wonder if they catch my Snapchat. In other article, it said, it always a bunny out. A bay make them catch up on Snapchat. Oh. A bay. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Need to give you a dub. Be yourself. How oh, feel the video? I call him name and say, what do you think one round can do? Bump at your nice clean forehead. <laughs> Yo, 
Because you're not saying it. Would you ever do nothing much to see one? Nobody, nobody like wants to play that song. Would you ever do nothing much to see one? Like him for play, because remember, him, them catch him face on the Snapchat. So, would you ever do nothing because the song right for him? What <laughs> <laughs> is the forestry department doing with mahogany? Solid mahogany. You know what this tree must have been? This is a solid mahogany tree, right? The forestry department is moving up. So when our people have a problem and we raise the problem, it is as if we are the obstruction. But when they're pilfering wood, forest, lumber, what is the forestry department doing with mahogany? Answer me that. After Chief Curry went live to show us how illegal lumbering was taking place in Quick Step in Trelawney, the Forestry Department released this. The Forestry Department addresses misleading information circulated on social media concerning the seizure of lumber in the Cockpit Country Forest Reserve. The agency was carrying out its lawful duties, upholding its mandate to protect Jamaica's forest resources. They claim that the Forestry Department disrupted an illegal logging operation on Friday, July 26, 2024, and was impeded in concluding its lawful duties by more than 200 community members and the illegal loggers. We aim to provide an accurate account of the events and address the misleading and false narratives circulating on social media. On the afternoon of July 25th, forest rangers from the agency identified an extensive illegal timber harvesting operation in Lewis Patent in the Cockpit Country Forest Reserve, part of the Cockpit Country protected area near Quickstep Trelawney. Upon receiving this report, the agency dispatched a team on the morning of July 26 to seize the illegally harvested timber. It was reported that at approximately 7 a.m., a truck loaded with the lumber was seen leaving the area before their arrival. Upon arrival, the team consisting of two agents' vehicles and seven staff members discovered significant illegal harvesting activities, including the cutting and conversion of several Jamaican mahogany trees into lumber. More than 500 pieces of lumber were located at multiple points along the trails within the reserve. The team began retrieving the lumber, loading 150 pieces into the agency three-ton truck. However, their exit was blocked as trees and boulders were used to obstruct the road. The team contacted the head office and a secondary team was dispatched, coordinating with the police for their release. It's a long article, Massive. I'm not going to read the whole of it, unfortunately. But you guys can go on over to their page and see the article for yourself. Well, Chief Corey is not listed as a person of interest anymore. And he also went live to give us an update on the situation. Check it out. Good morning, everybody. I just want to send um, gratitude to everybody who's been following closely the unfoldings of the last 48 hours going into 72. Um, we're here in a compound and there's, uh, it's been a tense moment for us and everybody in our joining communities. I've been assiduously working since morning to prevent any escalations of tensions with the dispatch of several officers into the quick step community this morning so it hasn't made it any easier to try and quell the, the temperature of the people when they see such an aggressive show of force in a maroon community um, particularly quick step and i saw that there has been some challenge as to the the, 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 the ownership of quick step that quick step is a government owned um, property right i'm gonna beg every single one of you to go and look up in your history book about the land of look behind right go look and read up the land of look behind and remember now this is the heart of cockpit country tell me which part in cockpit country the government of jamaica owns land explain that to me so whoever has that claim should bring that claim forward and should table it and let's have a discussion all these are things and unfoldings of what we've been asking the government to provide us with understanding as to the process of constitution reform what does it mean to maroon ownership of land and ownership for the indigenous people on the island of land and the rights 
that extend from the ownership of such land. These are real, real-time topics, and this is now coming forth that the government is challenging for quick step because, of course, the rich supply of lumber that sits in the heart of cockpit country. It's important to note the community is called Quick Step of Akompo, okay? A part of the land of Look Behind. Go and read it up. Who never know them history? Come to class. We're ready and we have no fight for share. The point is, the Maroons are within their right to defend their territory, to defend the forest. Chief Curry is not a lumber. Chief Curry is a defender of the earth, defender of the faith, defender of the culture. That's all I've been doing since coming here. And I've been asking for dialogue to resolve long-standing issues, particularly the one with Quickstep and the lumbering in Quickstep, the illicit lumbering in Quickstep. So I'm here to bring light to much of the darkness that has been haunting the Maroon communities across Jamaica. It's not just a compound, it's Flagstaff, it's Moortown, it's Scottsall, it's Charleston, all of them, right? We've been plagued and ridden by coercion, stress, and force, right, by various arms of government, various acts of government that seek to establish protectionism measures, but are actually used as exploitation measures to siphon resources from the cockpits under the eyes of the people without any accountability or any recourse. So, let's leave out the confusion, right? There's absolutely no confusion. We went over there and picked up on an illicit operation that has been ongoing for some time. Yes, there are Maroons involved. Many of them are working with agents of forestry to move these lumbers out. How the agents who are protecting the space and protecting the forest, calling out some of the illicit um, lumbering that's been taking place with collusion of some members of the forestry department. So it's nothing new. Very, very clear. All right? So people, I respect and appreciate your support. I'm being open and honest in the situation as it has unfolded. And we're here in a compound. As you can see, the entire community is out in support of myself, the full Maroon Council, and defense of our territory and resources. So that's it for today, Massive Mountain. I beg upon a nice, clean self. Enough love, enough respect. Blessings upon blessings upon blessings. Positive vibrations going out to the Massive. I'm out of Massey, Magan. Mount of Massey. Mount of Massey. Covering the latest in Jamaican music and culture. Like, share, comment, and subscribe now. now.